How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Sunday Night Heat, the Derby News and Rumors Show, right here on No Holds Bar Wrestling Podcast. We are live at on Spreaker, spreaker.com slash nhbwp, or available on the Spreaker app on all Android and Apple devices. When it is finished, the episode will be posted on Spreaker on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash nhbwr, iTunes, and Stitcher Radio. You can follow the podcast on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram by searching up No Holds Barred. WP. Be sure to head over to our YouTube and Spreaker channel as well. Give us a follow and give us a subscribe and hit that bell icon for all upload updates. I'm your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Mazars, and let's get right to the news. That's right, and before I actually get to the news, I kind of want to give my initial reaction and review, kind of, of uh, Money in the Bank last night. So I was unable to watch it live, and I can see Juggy in the chat. What's going on, Juggy? <laughs> um, basically, like, my initial reaction on Money in the Bank. Um, I, I couldn't watch it live. I was at uh, the corporate job, and yeah, it sucked. So I, I missed it live, but it's alright. I got to watch it when I, when I got home. Um... It was meh for me. At first, I don't know why I tweeted saying that I actually thought it was decent. Because in my books, it wasn't that much decent. Um, it was okay. I mean, I could have done a lot better. Um, the woman's money in the big match really, really disappointed me. I love that my girl Carmella won. Don't think that should have been the way she should have won it. Um, in my opinion, heels should be made to look you know, a certain way strong at a pay-per-view if that makes any sense. They shouldn't be letting their managers win the match for them maybe cringe you know maybe cringe worse knock someone off the ladder and then maybe pushes carmella up the ladder but not actually go up the ladder and grab it down you know what i mean like i i, I really felt that that took a, a lot out of the first ever uh money the bank ladder match for the women um like you can't have a historic match like that go down and have that kind of ending in my opinion that's just to me it took away a lot out of the match and for the spots that they did in the match, I mean, I wasn't expecting big ladder spots, but for what they did in this match, I loved it. But, again, you have an ending like that, you take away a lot out of the match. It really upset me, but whatever. My girl Carmella uh, ends up winning and uh, uh, being Miss Money in the Bank, I guess. But uh, Shane and, and Daniel Bryan tweeted out, and they're very upset, and they're going to address the issue uh, first thing on SmackDown this week. So we'll have to see what happens when that comes around. Um, for the rest of the pay-per-view, I thought the Usos and New Day match was actually one of the best matches of the night. Um, they had a lot of good near falls, and uh, I thought that tag team match was done really, really well. Um, I'm thinking the New Day at some point will win, maybe at SummerSlam, I'm guessing. Maybe so. there's still another SmackDown pay-per-view to go. I think it's Battleground in uh, July. But I think by SummerSlam, New Day will win the SmackDown Live uh, tag team title, so... We gotta wait till then for that. Uh, other than that, uh, Jinder Mahal and Randy Orton it, again. It did nothing for it. They put the legends at ringside, but who cares? Honestly, who cares? Legends are legends. Yeah, it's cool to see them, but I, it really did nothing for me this match. Um, they had the whole Bob Orton. I knew they're gonna include Bob Orton in some way, and then Randy Orton kicked the crap out of the Sing Brothers. That was hilarious. I loved him kicking the absolute shit out of the Sing Brothers. But uh, I knew Jinder Mahal was going to win. There was no way Randy Orton was going to win the title back this this soon. They're going to carry on with Jinder, and I'm thinking they're going to go with uh, John Cena and Jinder Mahal at Battleground July for the title. I can almost guarantee that's going to happen that way. Uh, you, you, we'll get the July 4th episode of, of uh, SmackDown, and Jinder Mahal is probably going to be running down the country, and John Cena is going to come out and all patriotic. You know that. You know the whole spiel. Um, but yeah, I think that's the direction they're going to go with with the WWE title from here. Uh, I know they got to do something for the next couple of weeks. Maybe they have a, a quick run with Rusev and Jinder. Um, so we'll see what what happens, I guess, uh, coming this Tuesday. Uh, as for the rest of the card, we had Lana and uh, uh, Naomi. And yeah, I can see Juggy in the chat going nuts. Mm. Yeah, that uh, outfit Juggy. That was something else, man. I, that left little to the imagination, if I can put it that way. For uh, for Lana's attire, man. Oh my lord! I didn't think they're gonna be that skimpy, but they're skimpy. I don't know if they're ever. Gonna, I don't know if they're gonna change that. We'll have to see what uh, what happens with their attire going from here. Um, but that match is okay. I mean, Lana is rusty as hell. You can definitely tell. Even if she's had live event matches, she's not the most fluid wrestler. Um, I think maybe she'll improve in time. If not, then maybe wrestling just not her thing. She just stick to being a manager. But um. 
she held her own a little bit. She did have some good moves. I like her finishing move. But uh, Naomi ends up uh, retaining. And I actually thought this would have been a spot. And I, 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 I took my prediction back when seeing how early in the card this title match was. I honestly thought Lana was going to win cheap. Then Naomi was going to try, like, just absolutely kill her. And then Carmella would be coming out with the briefcase to cash in on the down Lana. But I guess they didn't go that direction. They had Carmella come out at, at the end of the match and kind of tease like she was going to cash in. And then after the match, uh, again, she looked like she's going to tease against, cash in against Naomi, but decided not to. So it was interesting way of doing it. Um, I don't know if I totally agree with it, but uh, it's a good way to generate heat for Carmella, I think, to, to win and carry on with that Money in the Bank briefcase. So I think that's uh, one of the main things they are trying to do with uh, Carmella and being money, Miss Money in the Bank was to generate more heat that way in that type of form at the end of the title match. Um, besides that, uh, Money in the Bank, what else happened? I think that was... Uh, oh, yeah, the Hype Bros and the Colognes uh, and, the, and the kickoff match, which I didn't see yet. Uh, I kind of caught some highlights, but... Eh, I mean, I thought... This would have been a time for either Raleigh or Ryder to turn on each other. Maybe we're not saving that for SmackDown, but it's just a hype bros reunion and they beat the clones. You know, it's a kickoff match. What do you want? What, what else do you want from a kickoff match? Um, uh, we had a, a an impromptu tag team match. We had the, I thought the, the the fashion files were called the fashion vice. <laughs> now they've moved from like the 60s to the the, the late 70s and 80s and with the that kind of Miami Vice theme. Um, but they, they got a videotape and they played a cassette tape uh, about the, see who attacked them and, and trashed their office. I could tell right away it was the Ascension when the, the tape started playing. You can tell freaking Connor's little mohawk was sticking in the black up in the black figure, so whatever. Uh, they ended up having a tag team match with each other, so we had the Ascension and the Brazongo really quick. Really didn't give a shit. It, I skipped through it. Um, and Brazongo ended up winning. Cool. I mean, they could, that's literally a, a, a lazy SmackDown type of setup right there. And they've added it to a pay-per-view. Um, I love the fashion files. Or, I love, sorry, I love the fashion police. I love their, their gimmick and what they've been doing. But that's, uh, I don't know, man. I think they should still be going after the titles. I mean, a single title run is is pretty bad for, especially with talent like uh, a Fandango and Tyler Breeze, man. They, I think they deserve a lot more. And, yeah, freaking uh, rest in peace, Ascension, Juggy. My God, man. They just get buried every single time, man. And they, they could be a dominant tag team. I don't know what the hell it is with Vince not using these guys. If there's a personal vendetta we don't know about, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Um, I think that's all the matches, and we just saved the best for last. Uh, they had the, the men's money in the bank match going on last, and I thought that the WWE title would eventually be last. I didn't think it was going to go uh, that early either. Um, I was shocked, actually, because I honestly thought they were going to make that the main event. But they made the money, the men's money in the bank, Money in the Bank match main event and actually was pretty good. I enjoyed the main event. Um, I love the spot they did at the beginning with uh, Corbin attacking Shinsuke and knocking him out of the match. Um, it left a lot of questions going, and the referees arguing each other like, "Oh, we have to start with five guys." Then I guess um, I thought <laughs> my small fantasy was Dillinger is going to come out and take that spot, but I guess they didn't. Um, it was a good match. A lot of good spots. Kevin Owens took maybe like ninety percent of the brutal. Uh, ladder spots this entire match. I feel, man, that guy must be like, I don't know if he's gonna be wrestling in the in the live event tonight. And if he is, man, good for that guy, man. Like Kevin Owens is just coming off a broken thumb, and this guy's taking like ladder spot after ladder spot after ladder spot last night. And God, man, it takes a toll on your body. But uh, good for Kevin Owens to take spots like that, man. I thought the match was really good. There's a lot of good spots everywhere. Um, everyone did good in this match. I, every single competitor. Had a good chance of winning at some point. Even Dolph Ziggler. Um, and then we had the the one spot where Corbin was setting the ladder up. And Shinsuke's Nakamura's music hit. And Nakamura came out. And the crowd's really, really hype behind Nakamura. We even had the stare down between AJ Styles and Nakamura. Like It looks like a little preview. I don't know if they, they should have uh, done anything there. In my booking. And you can choose not to agree with me or not. You can choose to agree with me or not. I think they should have had their stare down styles and Nakamura. But at this point, I think you should have had two superstars come in the ring and, and fight with them instead of them fighting each other. I think you gave away a little bit too much with these guys. If you're going to save this for WrestleMania, you should just not have them fight each other at all. Like, not any way, form possible until WrestleMania. That's how you get this match hype for WrestleMania. You, you, you save all that all the way until 
WrestleMania. You do not have them fight each other. They, I think they did it a little bit too long last night. They let them go a little bit too long. They should have had some people interfere with that, but it is what it is. I, I love that. I love the stare down. You got the crowd hype behind it. It looks like and you can just tell. Well, the crowd like St. Louis, if they're going to get hype for Styles and Nakamura like that, like that's a WrestleMania hype crowd right there. You have a WrestleMania match set in stone for next year. Um, it's just, oh God, it's just, I, I don't know. Um, to me, I think they should have saved that. They honestly should have saved Styles and Nakamura from fighting each other until WrestleMania. They let it go a little bit too long, in my opinion. Um, again, I, in my booking, they should have just not let them fight. They should have had the two people come in and interfere before they actually hit each other. But you know what? It is what it is. It's done. And, uh, and Baron, we get Baron Corbin. Get Baron Corbin actually winning Money in the Bank. My boy Baron Corbin was so happy to see that he won. Um, I got I did pretty good on this pay per view actually. I think I got uh, I think I got four out of six right. Yeah, I think I got four out of six right. I don't know. I don't know. I have to go check what I got, but I knew Baron Corbin would win. I picked that and yeah, I picked my girl Carmella. She won even though it was a tainted finish. Um, yeah, okay, the pay per view was decent. It was, uh, I guess, a little bit less than decent. It's, it's got mad level written all over it. Again, my only favorite part was the men's money in the bank match. They tainted the women's money in the bank. Um, kickoff match, I don't give a shit about. Um, I thought the Usos and, and New Day actually probably stole the show, in my opinion. It, it's up there with the main event. Though Both those matches were my favorite. I love the tag team match with the Usos and New Day, man. I just I love the heel Usos as well. Um Let's see. Uh, yeah, that's basically I'm it. I'm going to run down uh, Money in the Bank. Let me just take a drink here. All right. <clears throat> so, now that we're done the run-through for Money in the Bank, I'm going to open up Skype. If anyone wants to call into the show, I'm going to leave the lines open. If you are new to the listening right now, if you want to add us on Skype, No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast, not all one word, it's all spaced out, add me on, uh, add us on Skype, I'll add you to the contact list, and you'll be able to call in to the show, and we can just talk some wrestling. So, if you guys want to call in, I'm opening the lines up right now, let me know, and just call into the show. I have it open right now, I'll, I'll patch you through as soon as you call. So, let me know if you want to call in. Just just call, if you want to, don't even let me know, just call in, I'll, <laughs> I'll answer you. So... While we're waiting for that, I'm going to get right into the news because this is the Sunday Night Heat. And uh, I wanted to get it done yesterday, but due to internet issues, and I finally got it sorted out yesterday. Thank God my dad was home. Uh, and Mr. Masters got it all figured out for me, and I got the internet back and running. Um, I can have the Sunday Night Heat today. Unfortunately, I wanted to have it yesterday, It's but it's going to happen today. Um, so... My first bit of news that was supposed to happen yesterday was uh, rumors on Seth Rollins' big announcement. But if you haven't seen on social media yet, he it's already revealed. Um, Seth Rollins is the now 2K18 athlete cover for this year's game. And they had a little uh, a minute 50 trailer. It was actually pretty cool. The, the trailer was... Uh, was like Seth was I guess it was Seth Rollins. You you end up finding out at the end. It's this masked guy who shows up at the WWE like uh, what's it called? It's a WWE Hall, not the Hall of Fame. It's a, a museum, and he blacks out all the cameras with spray paint. He ends up going in and just destroys all the merchandise and knocks out the security guard and just destroys all the merchandise. Like he burns Ric Flair's robe, he burns the Undertaker's stuff, he throws. Stone Cold's ATV off the rafters, and then he lights a, a mat or a, a lighter and burns the whole place and explodes. And as it's exploding, he takes off his mask and it's Seth Rollins laughing. Um, and it's it, they have this slogan: "Be like no one." That's I guess, I guess that's their slogan for this year's game. But uh, yeah, Seth Rollins is the cover athlete for 2K18. So and there's a deluxe edition they already announced that if you order the deluxe edition, you actually get to play four days early than anyone else. So I'll probably be depending on how good it looks. I'll probably be doing the deluxe edition. We'll see. Um, but uh, yeah, 2K18 coming out in October. I forget what the date was, but it's uh, mid October. Um, so that, that was my first bit of news yesterday. <laughs> um, so yeah, he's on cover 2K18. Sure. I I, I mean I thought it was gonna be uh, Kurt Angle and they're gonna do like a whole. Uh, you know what I mean? Like a Kurt Angle bonus buy. And I think they still might do it. They still might include him as the legend guy for the game. And there's probably like a, there's probably going to be another uh, exclusive pre-order. Or if you do the deluxe edition, you also get the code for a Kurt Angle character. You know, something like that. Um, so we'll have to see. We'll have to see what the news comes out with uh, 
Seth Rollins. Uh, I wanted to do this on YouTube Live too, but for some reason my uh, my side software that I, I'm trying to hook up so I can do it on YouTube Live, it, it, I don't know, it, it wasn't working. It looks like I have to re-download it, so I'm going to re-download it, and I got a busy busy week coming up ahead, so I don't know if I'm going to get it done for next Sunday, but I'll let you guys know um, with that. So we're going to move on to the next uh, bit of news, and, <laughs> and coincidentally, it is Kurt Angle. And it's about Kurt Angle, and it's uh, conflicting reports on Kurt Angle's in-ring return. Hmm. Earlier this week, it was reported that likely that the likely direction of the Kurt Angle and Corey Gray story Corey Gray storyline on Raw is leading to an Angle in-ring return. The likely opponent would be Triple H, where him and Angle would uh, rekindle their beef that is over 15 years old. Rumors were also flying that this match could take place at SummerSlam. Where Dardaby is looking to make this event as big as this event as big as possible, apparently for this year, uh, bigger than they already do. I mean, they almost make this like WrestleMania. They do like the whole travel package and everything. They want to make it bigger than that. All right, Dardaby, and a Triple H versus Kurt Angle match would certainly fit that bill. This report had many wrestling fans excited about the possibility of Angle wrestling again. Angle himself has been very adamant in that he wants to compete again, but not so fast. ProWrestlingSheet.com's James McKenna recently noted on Twitter that he's heard that WWE doesn't want Angle involved in any contact. That is what he, This is what he said. This is exactly coming from James McKenna, guys. For what it's worth regarding Angle, last I read, WWE was adamant on Angle being 100% no contact. Would bet money on not seeing him in, in the ring. McKenna has broken a few big news stories this year, including the first ever Women's Money in the Bank ladder match a few weeks prior to it being officially announced. We will obviously have to wait and see what happens, but just but just wanted to bring another side of the story here. Angle returning to the ring isn't 100% guaranteed like some fans believe. So that's pretty interesting how Angle is not 100% guaranteed to return to the ring anytime soon. I think maybe they're probably most likely saving this for WrestleMania. That's what my initial thought was. I thought they were going to do Kurt Angle in Triple H at WrestleMania next year. I didn't think they were going to do it at SummerSlam. That, to me, SummerSlam, that's a little bit too early, in my opinion, to have these two guys go at it. I know you want to make the pay-per-view as big as possible, but you already got people on the main roster to make it that big, man. You can do Shinsuke, John Cena, and Brock Strowman. That would do it for me right there. That'd be a great double main event for SummerSlam in my eyes. And you can do other stuff with the, the mid-card talent and, uh, you know, have a couple kickoff matches. I think you can make SummerSlam big. You don't need to have Kurt Angle and Triple H right away to make it big. Um, they can save that for Mania. And in the corner of this report, he's apparently not 100% uh, ready to go for contact yet. So we'll have to see what happens with this uh, this raw storyline with Corey Graves as well. Um, and God, speaking of, uh, do I have that written down? For uh, what's going to happen with Corey Graves. Let me just check really quick, guys. Uh, yeah, okay. I saved that for a little bit. Yeah, I saved the best for last. And I guys, if you have you probably already heard with uh, what's going on with Corey Graves and uh, his new storyline coming up. So we'll get into that in the last bit of the news today. Um, we got a Chris Jericho return update for you guys. It's only been a little over a month and we already missed Chris Jericho on WWE television. There's no question that he is one of the best parts of Raw over the past year with his friendship and eventually breaking up with Kevin Owens. Jericho is, is off conquering the music world with his band Fozzie. Many fans have been asking about Jericho's status and when he will return to WWE for another run. We have some potential bad news. Some bad news for your for you Jericho-holics out there. Um, it was briefly mentioned in the Wrestling Observer that Fozzie just picked up some more tour dates all the way through October and November. This has led to some rumors suggesting that Y2J won't be appearing on WWE television for the rest of 2017. Jericho is expected to work occasional live events within the WWE, but his status for returning to television doesn't look like it will happen anytime soon. If these rumors are correct, we shouldn't expect Jericho until at least the Royal Rumble or maybe longer, depending on when he chooses to, depending on what he chooses to do. So damn, man, we're not going to get Jericho for a hell of a long time, man, not until like around Royal Rumble time next year, uh, according to these reports, man. Fozzie's going on tour now until the October-November dates. 
that's nuts, man. Yeah, that new song and that new album they released must have been must be doing uh, wonders in the rock world. Um, I haven't really heard anything about it, but that's uh, that's crazy. You know, you know what? Good for him. Good for Jericho, man. Yeah, I know you can't. He's come out and said like Darby is his main focus a little bit, right? And but he he's also got his band too that he focuses on too. And if his band decides you know they want to go on more tour dates and Jericho decides to do it too, then he's gonna do it, man. You see, you can't always you can't make everyone happy, you know. And you know what? I'm all for Jericho going for his tour dates, man. We don't need him right now. He can go back to Royal Rumble and make a huge surprise. I think that'd be okay. Maybe he comes out during when Kevin Owens is in the ring during Royal Rumble. Who knows? We'll have to see what happens. Um, oh yeah, that's right. My, he would never be a part timer. That's probably you know what? Then he'll probably stay off until he comes back. Then, so uh, it is a respect thing to do, Michael. Chow, I, I agree. Um, next bit of news: uh, Samoa Joe and Lesnar to continue their feud. This is a big. This is one of the big lines I had today, guys. Um, so apparently, Samoa Joe and Lesnar might actually continue their feud. So here, here's a little news for that. We have mentioned prior. Prior that Samoa Joe versus Brock Lesnar feud is expected to be a one and done type scenario. Brock was originally expected to move on to Braun Strowman or someone else at SummerSlam after beating Samoa Joe. It was mentioned this week that if an angle between if the angle between Joe and Lesnar was able to garner enough steam, it could lead to a rematch between the two. This would all depend on the ratings and how angle and how the angle was being received by fans. This past week on Raw, fans saw Brock Lesnar's Mojo get into an epic brawl to start the show. The entire locker room had to be pull them apart from one another. This was a great segment, and it helped build Joe into a credible opponent for Brock. As for the writing of this, the video of the brawl on YouTube has over 5.7 million views. As a bit of a comparison, the amazing angle from Raw a few weeks ago where Smojo choked out Paul Heyman currently sits at 1.6. So that's a massive difference right there. And it looks like the fans are tuning more into this feud. Also, the video of Brock hitting Goldberg with an F5 the night after he won the Universal title is 5.3 million views. So it already the, the Samoa Joe and Lesnar brawl has already beaten out this on YouTube. Um... It's just, I don't know, man. It, uh, it, it, Greg in the chat saying Strowman versus Lesnar versus Joe for the Universal title of SummerSlam. Ooh, that's interesting. That's a, that's a, a monster's brawl right there. Um, so let me continue with this article. What this is telling us is that there's a clearly a lot of interest, duh, in the feud between Brock and Joe. Maybe even enough to get there to be thinking about extending it. Some rumors are also suggesting that due to the video's success on YouTube, WWE couldn't be planning something bigger between the two in the next few weeks. The morale of the story is that if WWE keeps building this feud that, that like they've been doing, we could see it extend into SummerSlam. Joe has looked like a million bucks so far working with Lesnar, and we can only, only assume that his stock will continue to rise as they interact with each other over the next couple of weeks. So, man, um... I love for this feud to continue. I honestly think it shouldn't be a one-off. That's a way to kill Samoa Joe's character if you just do a one-off. Because you know Brock's walking away in that match. Uh, well, obviously, if they're doing a one-off. So I think it should continue this feud into SummerSlam, man. I think Samoa Joe should be added to to Brock Lesnar and whoever they add to it. Um, in my eyes and what I've been reading lately, I thought Roman Reigns is supposed to face uh, Braun Strowman at SummerSlam. I thought they were going to do it that way. Um I think that that's that's what's gonna happen uh, tonight on Raw. I think uh, while Roman Reigns is making his SummerSlam announcement, Strowman is gonna either appear or, or make an indication that I'm gonna be your plans for SummerSlam, and it's gonna be Roman Reigns versus Strowman, and they're gonna build it that far all the way into uh, SummerSlam. Um, I mean, I I'd love that. I love these guys have put on a very physical feud so far in the past. And as much as people don't want to see them go at it again, I I'd rather have them two face each other than be in the universal title spot. Um, I think Samoa Joe and Lesnar should carry on until SummerSlam, man. I think that feud deserves to have more. And clearly, fans are tuning in to this feud. You can just see it all over YouTube. And if that's any indication, everybody should just continue the storyline and make it more intense, man. Um, so. In my eyes, they should continue it. Um, in Darby's eyes, who knows? They might just make it a one-off and bury Samoa Joe like they've done to many superstars in the past. Um, I really hope they don't. It would just kill. It would kill Samoa Joe if they did this. 
And I really hope they don't because Smojo is a beast and they could do a lot with Smojo. And if they want him to be this this beast character that they're they're billing him as, then you, you can't just have a one-off with Brock Lesnar and have him lose to Lesnar, man. It doesn't make any sense. Um, so, yeah, that's my opinion on that. Some huge news right there. I hope they continue it. Uh, my next bit of news has already happened. They debuted at Money in the Bank last night, but it was uh, about Maria Kanellis and Mike Bennett uh, appearing on WWE. Uh, so they, as we seen at Money in the Bank last night, they made their debut in a weird couples gimmick, and I don't know if that's gonna last, man. Um, that to me is just it. I didn't like it at all. I thought it was cringe. In my eyes, I thought it was cringe. They shouldn't do that. Maria should be in the women's division, man. Make her fight. She knows how to fight. Don't have this... Uh, Mike Bennett, he just looks soft with this stupid couples gimmick. I hated it. I absolutely hated it. It was probably one of the worst parts last night, man. Yeah, Mike Kanellis. <laughs> I can't believe they. You could tell the crowd even hated it when they announced him as Mike Kanellis. Or when he announced himself as Mike Kanellis. They booed the shit out of him because they're like, No, you're Mike Bennett. We know who you are. Oh, my God. That was god-awful, man. I hated that. That was so bad. Yeah, exactly. Michael Challenge had worst moment. That was literally the worst moment from last night. I was so cringe. Um, these guys were supposed to debut around WrestleMania weekend too, and it took them this long to debut. But ugh, if they if they had that much time to think of something for these guys, you really could have done something better than that crap you showed us last night. That was god awful. Um, I don't know. That was in my. I, I'm done talking about it. I really don't want to talk about it. It makes me cringe. Um, so we'll move on. To the next bit of news here. And I got some uh, WrestleMania news. Yeah. Uh, due to various reasons, there has never been a WrestleMania hosted in the United Kingdom. Actually, there has never been a WrestleMania hosted outside of the United States or Canada, for that matter. Well, duh. It has always seemed like WWE has zero interest in coming over to the UK. The time difference is the biggest argument against it. The show would start early in the afternoon for the fans in the United States rather than the usual evening. Um... Before I continue here, Michael Chow puts in the chat, do you see future Mar- Oh, God, Cena and Nikki, please no. If they're setting that up for <laughs> when uh, John Cena comes back, I would lose my mind. Um, it actually wouldn't make sense with the whole free, with this John Cena free agent garbage. Um, so I'll continue with this article. Well, we have a small glimmer of hope for UK fans out there. According to the new report... From independent.co.uk, London is on the list of cities being considered to host WrestleMania. This is based on WWE issued a survey to some of the attendees of this year's WrestleMania to gouge interest. London successfully hosted SummerSlam back in 1992, if people don't know, at Wembley Stadium. WrestleMania 34 is set for New Orleans, but the 35th edition of the event is without a host city. We will have to wait and see. Certainly a positive sign that London is a at least being considered to host the event. If they don't end up getting the host WrestleMania, maybe the city will still host a B-level pay-per-view, such as Extreme Rules or Payback in the future. Now, that would be something interesting, man. I think if they don't get WrestleMania uh, a Raw or SmackDown in a pay-per-view, or maybe have them both over there, would actually be interesting. I'd love that. Um... I mean, they used to have UK pay-per-views. It was uh, Rebellion and Insurrection. Um, God, God, Jinder Mahal versus Sin Cara, WrestleMania main event. Juggy, you're crazy, man. Um, but anyways, uh, yeah, if, if, if London doesn't get WrestleMania, which I mean they should, I think uh, WrestleMania London would be cool. I mean, we would have to be watching it really early here. I know for us Eastern time, um, if the WrestleMania kickoff started over here, if it was in London, I think it would be like 1 p.m., 2 p.m. in the afternoon, or even lunchtime. You know, I'm, I'm fine with that. It's a Sunday, man. No, no people are working over here on a Sunday. I think they can actually do that, man. Um, but yeah, that's what Michael Shell said in the chat. With the whole terrorist attack, it looks like there's a really highly doubtful for that to happen. Um, but who knows, man? RB could just say, hey, you know what? It's it's going to be two years from now. Hopefully, maybe it's going to be all blown over and it'll be better over there from two years from now. So we'll see. But if they do end up posting a WrestleMania, that'd be cool. Um, and a B level pay per view, that'd be interesting too. You know what? They could do it, man. They could do a B level pay per view, have it start time be like nine o'clock over there. You can have that happen. And then over here, it'd be a little bit better. It'd be like three or four o'clock. 
in the afternoon on a, on a Sunday, man. Like people don't work on a Sunday, so we'll see. Uh, Greg said they should go to Canada for 35 and then come back to Jersey. For, he's like, I, man, I don't know when they're going to come back to Canada. It's going to be tough, Greg, because our, our dollar sucks. So Vince would be losing some money in this case if he came up here. So I don't know. I don't think it's going to come up here anytime soon. So that's why me and Cappy are uh, making the trip down to New Orleans just to get it over with the next year. And I, I want to travel somewhere far if I'm going to go to WrestleMania. If it was up here, I wouldn't feel the same, man. If it was, like, in Toronto again, it, I just wouldn't get the WrestleMania vibe out of it. Um, but yeah, we'll see with London. We'll see what happens. Uh, next bit of news. Update on the missing in action American Alpha. Yes, I got some news about American Alpha, ladies and gentlemen. American Alpha have not been used much on SmackDown Live since they lost their tag team championships to the Usos. Their run as champions was also a bit underwhelming as they rarely got a chance to showcase their abilities on TV. According to some news according to some news rumors, there could be in store for a big return angle in the future. Ooh. There was report there was a report from Mike Johnson of PW Insider prior to SmackDown Live from last week that American Alpha was being discussed for a big angle to bring them back to the WWE television. As we know, they didn't end up happening, uh, and American Alpha were not on the show. So I guess they're supposed to happen last Tuesday on SmackDown. Um, Johnson correctly reported that Zack Ryder would be on the show, so we can assume that the plans for American Alpha were scrapped at the last moment and pushed back for the time being. And now that Zack Ryder is back, it looks like they could be pushed back for this Tuesday live on SmackDown. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see what they have uh, for American Alpha. So there's a big angle that's being planned for American Alpha. So they're on the way back, man. I can't wait for that to happen. Um, Michael Chell Mania in Japan. That'd be crazy. I'd love to see that. Um, but yeah, American Alpha, if they're planned for a big angle, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. So we'll see what happens. Maybe they'll come back this Tuesday. I hope so, man. Uh, they need to be back on television. There's no reason for them not to be on TV right now if they're not injured. Um, same with Ty Dillinger, not sure where he was last night either, that was a big missing thing from the paper, I thought we'd at least have an impromptu match or something, oh god, it pissed me off, but yeah, if they're, if they're going to bring back the American Alpha, um, yeah, they should have been Tyler Breeze mystery attackers, I agree, Michael Chow, that was a missed opportunity for sure, um, but if they have a big angle, I'm interested to see what this big angle is. And I hope I'm not uh, overhyping it. We'll see what happens. If that's a, a pun right there to the hype bros. Um, next bit of news. Rusev and others. Medical updates. Okay, so I'll, get, I'll talk about Rusev's first and then the others. Uh, many fans have been wondering, where the heck is Rusev? He has appeared in video that aired on SmackDown Live several weeks ago. The Bulgarian brute demanded a WWE Championship opportunity at last night's Money in the Bank. And from Shane McMahon. Rusev even announced that he would be coming to SmackDown to confront Shane. But as we all know, he never showed up. Ryan Satin of Pro Wrestling Sheet reports that Rusev has officially been cleared by WWE doctors. This report says that Rusev met with doctors on Tuesday of this week, or past week and was fully cleared to return. Rusev suffered a shoulder injury back in March that required surgery. It is un still unclear if this means that he will be appearing on WWE television soon, but it seems like it is a good indicator. It has been a good week for WWE on the injury front. We have some more reports that Braun Strowman and Paige, yes, my girl Paige, are coming back to TV very soon. Also, Pro Wrestling Sheet reported earlier this week that Dash Wilder is now clear to return from injury from his broken jaw. So now we're probably going to get the revival to finally come out in the whole Enzo and Cass scandal this week, probably. Um, Paige and Strowman are due back on TV soon. Paige is a good addition to the underwhelming women's Raw division that seriously needs help right now. I think she can bring a lot to the table, depending on what they do with her. Um... But yeah, Rusev is due back soon too. Maybe we'll get him on uh, SmackDown this Tuesday as well. I hope so, man. Rusev can do a lot for the SmackDown brand as well. And uh, Paige and Strowman will do a lot for the Raw brand. And the Revival coming back certainly helps the tag team division for Raw. As I think they will be splitting up the Hardys uh, very, very soon. Um, Michael Chow, do you think Jinder is affecting Rusev's return? Because I don't, I, because I do, and I think there to be want Jinder to become a dominant foreign heel right now and holding off on Rusev. Yeah, I can see that. It's a, it's definitely a good way to, to to see it from that way. But I don't know, man. Maybe, maybe again, like I, I, I Michael Chow, you missed it. I said it earlier in the show. I think uh, 
their direction now is going to be Jinder Mahal, John Cena come July 4th. But I think up until then, we're going to get a short Jinder Mahal, Rusev kind of confrontation up until then. We're probably going to get a title match. Uh, maybe uh, it has to be next week, right? Is next week the the week before July fourth? Yeah, so we're probably gonna get a title match set up for next week. So I, I'm saying maybe Rusev comes back this week, sets up a title match for with Jinder Mahal next week, and then uh, they start the J- Jinder Mahal John Cena feud the week after. So that's just my that's just my guess, Michael Chow. Uh, Greg thinks pa- J- do you think Paige will jump ship? No, I think they're gonna stake her on Raw. I don't think she'll be on SmackDown. They just debuted Lana. I think they're good now with the division on SmackDown. And now they got this whole Money in the Bank scandal going on. So I think Paige is good enough to stay on Raw. They, she, needs, she needs to help that division out on Raw. It's god-awful. So uh, that's what I think, Greg. And uh, as for Michael Chow, it's an interesting way to look at it. But I'm going to stick with my prediction. And Rusev will return next week to set up a title match the week after. And then the Jinder-John Cena feud will start on July 4th, which is the week after that. Um, next bit of news, romantic angle between Bailey and Corey Graves. Yes, yes. If you haven't heard, that's what WWE is planning. This cringe, cringe storyline. Um, this week, Bailey took part in a sit-down interview with the savior of misbehavior, Corey Graves. And as awkward as this interview was between them, it seemed that the ending was probably the most uncomfortable part if you haven't seen it. Bailey asked Corey if they could end the interview on a hug, something that made the WWE commentator feel awkward before he told Bailey afterwards that he needed a cigarette. Yes, awkward is a understatement for what we've seen last week. And Dave Meltzer has since speculated on the Wrestling Observer Radio that this could be the beginning of a romantic angle between Graves and Bailey. Uh, are you fucking kidding me, man? Are you on? Are you kidding? They really they couldn't think of anything better than this bullshit. Oh my god! Apparently, according to this report, this could be how Darby allows Bailey's character to move forward now that she's been taken out of the title picture. How is that a way to go forward from what her title picture was god awful? Because she just her character is terrible. So you're gonna go into the more cringier thing? Yeah, that's smart. This is just gonna. You're literally just pouring more dirt onto the grave of Bailey WWE. This is terrible. I really hope they do not do this because this this is gonna be up there with the uh, Bailey and Alexa. This is my life thing. This is literally the worst idea possible. Um, Corey, uh, going to this article. Corey has been used more on WWE TV lately with the new storyline involving Kurt Angle. So it would be interesting to see him used as a bigger angle, uh, part of a bigger angle, since he has been stuck behind the commentating desk for a long time. Bailey's loss at Extreme Rules has hindered her much has hindered her much more than WWE realizes, and now somehow the company has to build her back up. And if that means Graves and Bailey need to work together for a while, then it could be interesting. How can this article say it could be interesting few months, man? Interesting in a way that it's gonna be the worst few months if they actually go through with this, because that's the worst idea possible. Bailey and Corey Grace. Oh my god, I can already see how cringe this is going to be. And it's going to make me boycott Raw. I really hope it doesn't happen. Uh, Michael Chow Creative in the chat puts, I want Corey Grace to be the new Raw General. <laughs> Raw GM after Angle is fired. Yeah. Vince says, I want Corey Grace and I love Angle with Bailey. <laughs> oh man, you know, you know, freaking Vince and Kevin Dunn back there are just like thinking this is probably the best work they're ever going to do in their WWE history. Like, it's so bad. Does he not sit there and think? That this is probably not the good, not a good idea. He, yeah, exactly, Greg. He wonders why Triple H is pissed off at Vince. Like Vince wonders why Triple H is pissed off at him because he does shit like this, man. If they go through with this romantic storyline, I may boycott Raw. I'm, I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Until Paige comes back, and I'll be one reason for me to watch Raw in Broken Matt Hardy. I'll wait for those two parts, or I'll watch the highlights. I will not watch Raw. I'm not wasting three hours every goddamn Monday. To see Bailey and Corey Graves have a, a, a ridiculous storyline and watch the other wasted three hours of my life because Raw is not interesting whatsoever, man. I just might watch SmackDown every week. Maybe I'll just review SmackDown. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, I really hope they don't go through that. That is literally the most cringiest thing I've ever read in my entire life. I really hope and pray to God that they do not go ahead with this, man. If they do, I'm sorry, guys. I'm gonna hashtag boycott raw. It's dumpster. It'll be it'll be an actual dumpster fire. 
It's bad. But that is it for the news, guys. That's all the news I had. Again, Money in the Bank was meh. The news this week, I, I wish I had it done yesterday, but again, due to issues, I couldn't get it out to you guys. Um, Michael Child in chat, Corey has referenced on the Derby show, Superstar Inc. He's married with kids. This makes no sense. Yeah, Vince, Derby fans have short-term memory. Yeah, remember when he said we have short-term memory? Yeah, okay. Um, that's not going to stop us from searching it up. You oh, man, Michael Chow, he, Vince has just lost his marbles, man. Clearly, we got a pay view like Great Balls of Fire with a, a, a penis logo coming up. You know, he, he's clearly not thinking straight. Um, anyways, guys, that's it for the news. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you have, go over to YouTube, hit that like button. Be sure to subscribe on Spreaker and YouTube for me. And uh, go to iTunes and Stitcher and give us a five-star rating. That would definitely be appreciated. But that is going to wrap it up for the Sunday Night Heat uh, the show where I talk about Derby news and rumors, and today where I gave my Money in the Bank reactions and review right here on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. We are live on Spreaker um, at Spreaker.com slash NHBWP or available on the Spreaker app on all Android and Apple devices. When it is finished, this episode will be posted on Spreaker on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash NHBWR, iTunes, and Stitcher Radio. You can follow the podcast on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram by searching uh, by searching Noel's Bar WP. Be sure to head over to our YouTube channel and Spreaker channel and give us a subscribe. Hit that bell icon for all upload updates. I'm your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters. See you guys next time.